back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks, but let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. That's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio. Thanks for joining us today, Andy. Yeah, happy Monday. All right, happy Monday is right. We just talked about Airbnb in this uh, particular travel space, and it seems like demand is still pretty robust across the board as far as experiences and traveling for, uh, you know, for consumers. But at the same time, we're also seeing a big spike in a pickup in business travel also. What kind of data are you seeing out of Expedia ahead of their earnings? Yeah, when we look at Expedia, of course, the first thing we look at is the overall travel environment. And, you know, when we look at consumer mentions of traveling uh, for work or, uh, or for leisure, both are up uh, considerably on a year-over-year -year basis, as you might expect, um, with COVID kind of taking a back burner in terms of uh, people's mindsets, uh, traveling for work mentions up uh, nearly 85% year over year, which I think is an incredibly bullish sign for the tra travel industry. Uh, traveling, flying for leisure up 43% and people looking for hotels. All this is good news, of course, uh, for Expedia. Now, on the other hand, there is some bad news, uh, and that is over the last 30 days, 45 days, we've really started to see some deceleration in uh, these numbers and Expedia's numbers specifically. And the, the primary pain point for this is rising prices. And so you've got this kind of, you've got this significant lag between uh, increased consumer demand and what the industry can supply. Uh, that along with uh, rising fuel prices, uh, pilot shortages, uh, hotel staffing shortages is really becoming a very difficult environment to really predict anything in the travel space. Uh, so what we see with Expedia is, you know, doing doing a fine job. They're in a good spot um, in terms of uh, the the macro uh, demand side of things, but there's just not enough supply to make the consumer happy. And what that's causing is really rising prices and uh, unstable uh, travel conditions where people aren't sure if their flight's going to get canceled or the hotel room's going to get canceled. So the other thing that we're seeing is a lot of people moving towards the Airbnbs or the VRBOs, which uh, Expedia owns. And you can see it when we look at uh, consumer happiness levels of just general travel sites like Expedia or Booking, those are pretty low, although Expedia does a better job than one of its primary competitors uh, booking. Uh, Airbnb absolutely dominates in terms of the consumer experience, even with those high fees that you guys mentioned in the last segment. So I'd say, you know, it's a good thing Expedia owns VRBO because that gives them some diversification uh, in their offering. But overall, it's a really mixed bag for travel right now. It's a really tough time to make any sort of prediction any distance out into the future because, um, you know, like I said, supply constraints, energy costs, and all that is is going into uh, overdrive in terms of impacting uh, consumer decision making. I think that's going to be what we hear on the call from Expedia. I think it's going to be very difficult for them to ha have any sort of clear guidance that gives Wall Street uh, a whole lot of confidence moving forward. I think it's a really mixed bag and it's going to be a very interesting uh, call to listen to. Andy, when we compare like Airbnb and Expedia and some of your data does that basically, these companies are similar, but they're they're also very different, right? I mean, it's almost like comparing Netflix to Disney because yeah. I like the fact that Expedia, they touch every part of travel, right? There's virtually no part of travel that you can't book through Expedia, where Airbnb is more like a Netflix. They, they do their thing. It's many places, but they're really just involved in lodging. So, like, the numbers that, that you put about consumer happiness... I'm not real surprised by those numbers, but, you know, there's an old saying, I'm not trying to beat everyone, I'm just trying to win. Are both of these companies winning during this? I don't care about the competition between the two. I just care if they're both winning, because Expedia, I think, does a bunch of different stuff that Airbnb doesn't do. Where am I wrong in this? No, no, I think, I think you're right. Expedia has a really nice diversified portfolio of offerings. I think the analogy to Disney uh, is really apt. Um, you know, I would say that the one thing that we are seeing is that Expedia's purchase of VRBO 
uh, was very prescient and and uh, is benefiting the company uh, immensely at this point as consumers travel, uh, you know, preferences have really shifted and it's, it's becoming a permanent shift. And I think that them getting ahead of that curve is good. And it would be interesting when we see Expedia versus booking. Uh, I do think Expedia has a leg up that they didn't have uh, a couple of years ago. And that's interesting because I've seen a lot more advertising for VRBO. It seemed like when Airbnb yes. went public, Andy, it kind of a VRBO got pushed to the side, even though I think they were first in this space. So I think yep. that's a, that's a coup for Expedia probably moving forward where they have a balance of both of it. But do you see these low consumer happiness marks for like booking and Expedia? Is that probably because of the fact that, hey, I'm going to go on Expedia and I'm going to look for a flight, but I'm not going to book it through Expedia or maybe all the travel disruptions that we've had over the last several years since the pandemic started is that, hey, maybe the, you know, rebooking or maybe canceling your hotel isn't as easy as just booking through either the airline or the hotel directly. Yeah, I think that I think that is a big factor. I will say, you know, in the travel industry, our scores are always low uh, in terms of consumer happiness. People generally aren't very happy when they're traveling and especially not when they're going on social media to talk about their travels. It's usually a complaint. Uh, but highlighting the difference between uh, Expedia and booking, I think, is uh, is key. That Expedia is doing a better job within that lower uh, bar threshold and then showing you know, how Airbnb is outperforming both of those, I think does speak to that coup you talked about for Expedia getting uh, VRBO and why they're advertising it so much and trying to maximize uh, that as their, as an offering they have, because uh, consumers just quite simply prefer it. They learned it during COVID and they continue to prefer it afterwards, uh, I think is a pretty big deal for the, for Expedia. Yeah, and going into this earnings result, uh, Andy, what kind of score do you guys have at Like Folio based on your data? Yeah, I'd say slightly bullish. I think they're going to report a good quarter, probably better than uh, analysts expect. But I think that it's going to be tough for them to have any sort of guidance at all that that moves the needle for Wall Street. So, uh, really touchy one. Uh, you got to have some conviction on travel if you want to play this one. Yeah, and definitely rising costs and inflationary pressures definitely hurting these companies too. Even though Demand is there. All right, Andy, great stuff as always. Thanks. All right, that's Andy Swan, the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, joining us, giving us the data on Expedia.